Welcome to this uh, development review of the new Kodi 16, which we are currently uh, working on. So we're already two months in, so we have done a lot of work in code wise and in some visuals. So let me show you. Uh, one thing I want to show you is how to upgrade the current Isengard to the development version, which actually is the same as just upgrading any version. So as you see here, I, I run everything as portable mode. So I have a Kodi folder on my second drive, which I install Isengard. I also run it in portable mode, as you see here. So I'm the, the benefits of this is that I can have multiple versions in the same folder as you see here I still have Helix for testing Isengard, the retro player Isengard already had Jarvis installed so I am just moved my portable data out of it and put in place the portable data I had from Isengard so what will happen is if I now run Jarvis so Kodi 16 on top of Kodi 15, it will do some upgrading on certain files, uh, databases, and perhaps pull in some add on updates that are available for Jarvis. So, as you see here, I have the different shortcuts on my desktop for running them. So, if, if I click here, it will start only the Helix version. So, all of these are separate from each other, so they don't interfere. So properties, as you see here, I added a dash P, which stands for portable mode. So it will, if you add that to a shortcut, it will create that portable folder inside your installation folder. So be aware where you put that installation folder. For development purpose, this is seriously a must, else it would put it somewhere in user and it's a common folder so if you run each version it could screw it up well screw it up it, it could interfere so that's why I run portable so here you have the portable data so it consists of all the add-ons I already had in Isengard the cache uh, the user data so uh, as you see here I had a backup which can go uh, the password files from all setting up. I had a, a advanced settings. This one sort by Alpus artist then by year. This is one we are going to discuss later on. This is an option I had because I wanted my albums to be sorted by the artist and in chronological order. So that option was only available as advanced settings. So we're going to discuss that later. Here we have the add-on data, as you see here, these are purely the settings from each add-on itself. And here we have the, the GUI settings. GUI settings contains all the settings that Kodi needs, including all the skin settings. So as you see here, Confluence, Series Extended, all the skins I had installed, which are quite a lot since I did some reviews on them. So we also changed the way this was uh, stored, which we'll show you. So let me first run the Isengard. As you see here, this is my uh, setup. It has some add-ons installed, TV shows, music. So I copied this folder as portable data to a Jarvis folder. Closing down takes a while because I just booted it up, so it's still working on some things in the background. Let me already go here. So if you go to the Kodi.tv site and you hit downloads, and scroll down you see here all the releases we are currently have available the release candidate of 15.2 which has some fixes here we have the 
version 16 called Jarvis. So there's still the alpha 1 snapshot which is about a one month old so let me get the nightly installer. Here we have all the, the builds we do uh, build on a daily basis with uh, a PDV file which helps us de debugging. So we only need the, the .axe. So it's downloading now here. So make sure you always grab the latest nightly available. They are sorted by date, so but make sure you have the latest one. So let me now boot it up. Here you have the standard Windows 10 uh, warning because uh, we don't sign the uh, the file, so a known publisher. Yes, I want to run it anyway. So we have the pop-up for user account. Yes, I do. Here we have the setup wizard, so this is the basic installer. This is the, the GPL license, which you always ship. This, this basically means that you, if you modify the source, you must also provide the, the full code. So this is mainly an open source license, so it's not a user license. So I agree. This is the standard list of things we install. So we have the audio decoders, the encoders for uh, getting your normal uh, CDs ripped to uh, a uh, flock or wave or vorbis. Some PVR add-ons. So these are installed by default. We also install retouch skin for touch screens and uh, visual C++ packages. In the past we had DirectX 9 here, but since we now upgraded uh, Kodi to DX11, we don't need that file anymore because since Windows 7 and certainly Windows 10, you all have DirectX installed, so we don't need that package anymore. Um, since and actually so don't worry about us upgrading to DX11, so DirectX11. We only use DirectX9 features. So why did we upgrade? Well, because uh, the, the library, so the, the interface we use for DX9 was outdated. So we had to upgrade to 11, but we only use the lower end features. So we still are fully compatible with DirectX9. So you don't need a new graphics card. You can just keep running it on your old computer like you did. Just make sure you have the proper drivers installed. So, so let me uncheck uh, C++ packages because I know I have these. If you don't know if you have them, keep this box checked and just hit next. It doesn't matter if you already have them, you can just go forward with it. As you see here, I want to install it in Kodi. Jarvis. By default this has the, the C program files x86 slash Kodi. That's the default install folder. But because I already installed it once in this folder, it will automatically go here as well. So as you see here, it will put this in this folder. It will not override the portable data because we, we exclude that from anything happening in it. So it it's safe to install it in the same folder you already had. So let's go forward. Just want, it gives a warning, a previous installation was detected. So do you want to override it? And your settings will be kept intact. So yes, I want to install it there in the same folder. Hit install. Now it's unstall installing the previous version. So it will remove some of these files. We'll keep the portable data. Maybe we can show that. You see some files are gone now and are added again. So this will install all the needed files for Kodi. So one thing I mentioned is the, the settings which are in GUI settings. So as you see here, 
here are all the, the skin settings. So what we did in 16 is move them from the GUI settings file to a settings file like we already do for other add-ons. So like we'll store be in an add-on data folder. So here, as you see here, skin confluence, this will get done for any skin you have installed. We only do it on the moment you switch switch a skin. So it will be kept in this file until you switch to that skin. So as you see here, the installer is finished. You minimize all that. So let's run it for the first time. As you see, it's quite fast on booting up. You saw the quick splash of the, the new uh, logo we did for this version. So each version we do a different logo. Uh, what we also change is the instead of the smaller 700 pixels logo, we now do a full screen logo. It's purely visual, but it also Although it was visual, it actually fixed some problems with on, on startup. So it's a quite nice feature that actually came as an extra bonus. So as we see here, we'll go to appearance. Let me switch to which can, as you see here, it, it gives a warning, but a file was changed because it now removed all the, the confluence uh, settings. So I use notepad for checking what happens. So here you see the skin sire, uh, series extended. So let me switch to that skin. Oh. Let's see here. Oh. And now uh, the settings from uh, series extended are gone from this file. Don't worry, we move them to a separate settings. As you see here, it has now its own settings file. So why did do you do this? Uh, for one, the, the GUI settings became really big because it's thousands of lines for each skin. You see here, just 3,500 lines for because just because I installed skins, several versions, so it would ke keep all that data here. So this is now moved to its own setting file, just like any other add-on. So this is a really nice feature. The, the the biggest advantage is you can now just copy this folder to any other computer and it will have the same skin settings as you had on this one instead of copying this file which has actually uh, device specific settings so copying this one to any other computer could potentially give some problems so by now pulling out the skin settings it's it's quite easy to now have the same set up on any computer without having possible problems with this one. So let's go back to the skin uh, confluence. So that's just a little backstory on what we did there. So now one of the features I like I asked for was here we have sort by artist. So what happens is that it sorts all these uh, albums by the artist. And also the, al the albums are alphabetically. So what I wanted was alf actually to have it chronological. So if we now do, do artist year, it will actually put these in chronological order. So the oldest one will be first, depending on sort ascending or descending, but it's ascending is most logical. So it will have all these albums from the same artist in the same order as the year they are released. So let me show you. 
this was album sort by released sort by album 10 years from the advanced settings so actually this one can just be deleted because it will work from the interface itself so let's switch back to Cody again another thing we uh, we did was a uh, community developer actually uh, sent us uh, a code uh, for review so we add the music now on file date so in in the past we we uh, we scanned in the music and it was sorted by the added in the order we scanned it so we now do it on file date like we do for new uh, movies and episodes so it could be that the if you scan in new uh, movies and new tv shows it doesn't actually is recently added because the file date was way older than the, the current ones so we also do that now for uh, albums and songs so it's it's not really a visual thing but it brings the, the music section more in line how we handle movies and and episodes and other videos so so that was music part so if you now go to settings system logging we have we have a new option called event logging so you can disable this if you do not want it so let me turn this on for now because we haven't decided what we want to have logged as event so event are usually the pop-ups you get at the bottom so let me show you show event log as you see here Cody has successfully started so currently this is only one uh, thing that we now show at this moment so let me do uh, let me install an add-on so install from repository uh, I want a video add-on let me install tweakers so this is a Dutch website for uh, hardware and software a lot of really cool websites so as you see here at the bottom tweakers are add-on enabled so this pop-up gets is now also listed in the event log so logging event log as you see here add-on enabled so currently I don't have any updates pending because I already had those but the logging will also show if an add-on was updated so you would see uh, YouTube updated or uh, the movie database updated another cool feature that got added uh, with the same event logging is if I now scan in movies so let me do update library so it starts scanning now some of the, uh, the movies I added recently as you see here it's, it's it's now scanning through my server for getting the new uh, uh, movies I ripped from the DVDs because why would I want DVDs if I can just have it on my server so I just have a pile of DVDs uh, somewhere in, uh, in the attic and just have them stored on, on my server because I don't want to go to all the DVDs so we go to back to system settings logging as you see here there are now two new entries video library scanner failed to scan movie tiny toy what this means is when I hit update library it couldn't find tiny toy 1988 as a match on the, the movie database where we which is the default uh, website where we get our data from then just added a new one a paper planer I don't know which movie that was but apparently it cannot find it on the website same as the adjustment bureau so for 2014 this could be 2013 so I have to look it up on a website um, here I made an obvious typo bureau so yeah, I put a Y here so it should be a U 
So this list will actually give me a, a better overview of the, the, the scanning process. We already did this in the, the debug log where we showed the failed scanning, but you have to open, let me show you quickly. Yeah, I had to open the Kodi log and then scan through it. And it's not really user friendly. You see, you, you would have, it's now in debug mode, so it's, it gives a lot more uh, information. So this is way easier for regular users. Just go to the log and I see you hear the, the, the failed scanning. So you can now go to your uh, server or hard drive and fix the naming of these and then run scan again and see if anything else fails. Um, that was logging, so interesting feature. We'll be we'll making sure that uh, it will be we'll have all the events that need to be logging and don't overflow it with any pointless messages, just the, the, the ones you want or actually need. Um, so the next one is video subtitles. So here I have preferred subtitle language in Dutch. So what we actually did now is these options used to be between all the other languages. So we now put them on top. So if you had user interface language, it would be way, way down, sorted between here. So. We now make sure that it's it's on top, same as original stream language. So, so user interface language actually makes sure that the subtitles preferred. So it doesn't mean it will do that. It, it just says the preferred subtitle will be in the same language as your interface. So if I set my interface in Dutch, it will get the Dutch. It would be almost the same as saying here Dutch. Well, because I have my interface in, in English, I said Dutch. So uh, We could also uh, choose original stream language. So these options were already available. So if the stream is in, or the audio is in English, we will get English subtitles. If it's in French or German, it would get those languages as subtitles. Here we have two new ones, none and forced only. So if you hit choose none, it will actually turn off all the subtitles. So every subtitle will be default off. Uh, I quite like this option. It's also re requested quite a few times. So we now added this, which means that if you still want a subtitle, you just go to play a movie and you enable it. So let me go to Central, which is quite a nice one. I'm not sure if it has subtitles. So let me go to video settings. No, the wrong one. As you see here, enabled subtitles is it's disabled. So if I still want it, I can choose to enable it. As was as you see here, subtitle language was English. Stop it for a second again. Go back to settings. Sure, hope this works. Put in Dutch. Go back to Central, play it. As you see here now, subtitle language has Dutch. And Let me pause it. As you see here, enabled subtitles is now turned back on again. And the language is also Dutch. So this is really a nice feature. So let me show you if I put it in, say, if I want German. I don't want the sound. Okay. 
As you see here, the subtitle now changed to German by default. So it will pick the ones available, so it doesn't mean if. So if I have Dutch and the, the audio of the file doesn't have Dutch subtitles, it will obviously pick the default one. So that could be English or any other language. But if it has Dutch or the language you choose, it will try to use that subtitle. So let me turn it off because I quite like that option. Um, for the Brazilian people, um, we used the, the ISO language. So in the past, we because Brazilian Portuguese is slightly different, so we have only Portuguese here. So what we did is now, if you international, if you install the language Portuguese Brazil, it will also add that option. Let me quickly, as you see here, it's now in Portuguese, Brazil, so it's, it's uh, quite different. So let me put it back in English. What happened now is we add, all, add that language to the subtitle selection. So if I now go to Portuguese, it has also Portuguese, Brazil. So this is... An, a nice feature for the non-standard uh, ISO languages selections. So if you install the, the, the interface language, you will now also have the Brazilian Portuguese version. So, so far for the subtitles. Um, so what we have next. So another thing we changed in the, the add-ons. So we go to add-ons install from repository. We added a look and feel uh, menu, which has the, the GUI sounds, so the interface sounds, is a, so the, the clicking you hear. So each skin now has its own add-on for the sounds. So they can you can also choose each other's sounds. So if you have a skin but you like the, the uh, the sounds from another one more you can now easily switch it in Let's quickly show you that skin a seer confluence ue sound so i want the amber ones so it's installed now and as you see here it has the amber ones so let me put back the confluence Back to add-ons, install, look and feel. So we put this, all these used to be here in this entire list. So it was a way long list. So we now put the look and feel category in it. So it's it's a bit more of a cleanup. So we also have skin here. So, so I, as you see, I have quite a lot installed, which are... Uh, Cody 15 compatible still, so they, these are just converted to uh, Cody 16. We did some changes in for the interface in 16, so some things might not work anymore in these skins. So that's why I always use Confluence for showing, because we always keep that one up to date. Uh, languages, so here are the language add-ons, as you see here. Brazil. So it's enabled, so screen server and here we have image collections. So image collections are the, the general way of providing packages of images. So each skin can actually use these packages. So in the past, they, each skin had to um, include all the images which they wanted to use. So some skins were like 80 or 90 megabyte because all these images are were included. So as you see here, we we uh, it's authored by Team Cody, so we maintain the, these images. So what these images do is actually provide some, as you saw, weather. 
weather fan art so these are the backgrounds or the, the icons you see in the, in the weather uh, movie genre music genre um, so let me show you what studio icons are we have white and colored ones so for that I have to change to a different skin because Confluence doesn't use it let me switch to Eon Knox Yes. When I would go to movies, as you see here, we have here the DreamWorks icon. So these are the, the, the icons. This one doesn't exist. Here we have the universal one. So these are the, the, the icons in white. So there's also a, a color package. So this used to be a real pain to get these installed and updated, which were is actually like 15 to 20 megabytes per skin. So if you had multiple skins installed, so that was like 10 of those, so it's like 150 megabytes, which is now just eight. So it's, it's just a really, tiny change for like users won't notice but this is really important for skinners for the, the, the people who make these skins to have an updated package of icons so once in a while you get an update and it's only a couple of megabytes but all skins will benefit from that so let me go back to confluence um Let's see what else. I uh, think you won't maybe notice and really notice. Well, we actually changed the, the, the algorithm which renders these uh, images. So all these images come from the, the movie database, which are like really big uh, image files, sometimes like 2000 pixels. And what we do is we downscale it to a usable format or size. So it doesn't, they are not that uh, big anymore. So we do the uh, scan, of re we store those local as cached. So the, the algorithm we use was uh, fast by linear and we moved that to bicubic. So that sounds technical, but let me show you what that actually means. We have some example. As you here, we see the milestones for development. So let me quickly find uh, the code change. What's well, down here? Um, oh, put the, get the right one. Was changed in alpha one. One please. Here we have the, the, the code change, the sports, sports specifying the image scaling algorithm. So in this code change, we added the, the, the option to choose which algorithm you wanted. So in advanced settings, that's XML, you can change it, but we changed it by default to a better one. Here you have the, the discussion on what the code changes would be and Here we have the example. So we used uh, fast by linear. See here, 12 kilobytes. Here we see on the W, it's quite jagged. You can see the pixels and it's it's not as quite looking. So another option was by linear. It's, it's better, but as you see, it's quite soft on the edges. So not as nice. So we picked by cubic. So it's actually smaller in size than fast by linear, it's only two kilobytes, but it doesn't matter a lot in the end. And the edges are way better. So no jagged lines or you can still see a little of it, but it's, it's better than this soft, soft look. So here we have some bigger images. So let me open those up. Let's zoom in a bit. So here, 
and you have a lot of uh, artifacts so you can see all the pixelation the jagged lines around his hands the gun around his face so that was the old one here you see it's way better so let me switch also a lot around the hands so the edges are way better so this is the old one this is the new one you see around these hands and here so it's it's quite a lot better and for CPU time we did some testing on a Raspberry Pi and actually made almost no difference so that's why we we chose this uh, this algorithm so a little more about those uh, here we see where for next month alpha 3 here we had Jar Jarvis 16 alpha 1 which was a month ago so we had 207 pull requests so in each pull request we do some changes so a lot of these are technical changes you also see here we tag them as backports so it, which means if we find a problem in our current development version which also applied applies to the current released version like which is now Cody 15 we we'll put a, a backport tag on it and make sure that also ends up in a next Cody 15 version which is 1 and currently 15.2 which we're all working on so all this is our all changes we do a lot of technical things which doesn't really mean anything to normal users but nevertheless these are important changes so this is Jarvis Alpha 2 as you see here still backport labels so although we are working on 16 we still find some problems which we do want to get into 15 so um well so these are some for fixes or improvements or api change which is important for uh, add-on developers or remote control developers so as yes, you see a lot of changes are being done with still a lot of things being backported to the Cody 15 range although we are working on 16 so so don't worry we don't if we don't fix something we still are working and finding solutions for certain problems so this uh, new image uh, caching uh, we talked about so the, the switch from files by linear to by cubic it will only be for new movies so the current images are not touched at all so if you already had it scanned in and all the, the posters were there they still use the, the old uh, algorithm so only if you add new movies those will use the, the new bicubic uh, algorithm which should make the, the posters look way nicer of course if the source image is not as nice you won't get anything better from it so if this image was really really bad you, we cannot upgrade it but we can keep it as close to the original as possible while getting a, a decent size so that was about it so let me see the system info as you see here this is the 16.0 alpha 2 which should be released in one September so that's a couple of days away as you see here compiled 30 August 30 so two more days and we will release a public version although these are also public and anyone can use them but some might just want to wait till we actually say okay this is the, the alpha snapshot here you can try it out so as you see the, the upgrade from 15 to 16 was really smooth no problems all my add-ons still work 
If we go to Twit, just see here, it, it all still works. So no changes in that area. The library still works. So all we do is change things on on the, in the background without any visual changes, but there are tiny changes would make it all better. So that's it for now. So let's see you in the next time for if we have some more changes. So thanks for watching.